Welcome to another episode of SOLIDWORKS for Creo Parametric Users. In this video, we're going to continue our exploration of cross-sections in drawings. We're going to look at six different topics. First, offsets, then aligned cross-sections, third, using sketches, then broken out sections, crop views, and finally, cross-sections of assemblies. Let's start off by creating a cross-section in this cam cover to take a look at some of the different offset options. I will choose section view. I'm going to make a horizontal cross section. Let me let it snap into the center of that hole. And then we get our toolbar that opens up. I'm going to choose to create a single offset. And in the bottom of the screen, it's prompting me to select a point on the cutting line to start the offset. So maybe I wanna start it at the center of this circle. And you can see the preview as it's going down and reacting to my mouse position. I'm now prompted to select geometry to set the depth of the offset. So I will select the center of this circle. I'm happy with that. If I wasn't, I could undo the selection, but I will hit the check mark. And now it is computing. I'm getting a preview of the cross section. I have the auto flip option turned on in the property manager. So if I were to move my mouse above the model, it would recompute how it should look. But let's put it down here below my drawing view and then left click. You, I can change any of the standard options that we have for the section view, but I'm happy with this. So let's hit the check mark in order to complete it. So there you can see the cross section arrows and the section view that is created with the offset. Now I wanna take a look at one of the other different kinds of offsets, a notched offset. So I am going to select this drawing section view and then right click on it and choose the delete button. And yes, I'm going to delete all of it. Now let's go back to the section view command. Once again, I'm creating a horizontal cross section and make sure it snaps right into the center. Maybe I need to zoom in to make sure I'm getting exactly where I want. There we go. That is good. And from the toolbar, I can choose to do a notch offset. And the first few times that you do this, I recommend that you pay attention to the prompts that you are getting. So first, I'm being prompted to select a point to start the offset. And I'm going to let it snap right into the center of this circle and click or move my mouse over that circle in order to sense its location. And for the second click, you're going to select a point on the cutting line again in order to set the length of the offset. And let me just get it to snap right over on there. There we go. And then for the third click, we're going to set the depth of the offset. And I want it through this other hole, so I will left click there. And now I can hit the check mark and it is computing. And here we can see a preview of the offset cross section. I will left click to place it on the sheet. Oops, zoomed in too much. And then hit the check mark in order to complete that section view. So those are some of your different offsets. Now let's take a look at an aligned view. Let's switch over to a different sheet. And so you can see that this part does not have radial symmetry. So let's take a look at some of the different cross sections that we can generate. Let's go to the section view. And this time for the cutting line, I will choose to do the aligned one. And it's going to require three different picks. So let's start off by selecting our center location. And then I'm going to have it go through this hole. And then let's go through the center of this hole. And then I will use the right mouse button as is being shown with the tip on my pointer. And so it is computing. And I can make this position right above the model. There you can see the cross section that is aligned to those arrows. Let's do another one to the side. So for creating my section view, I'm leaving it on the option for aligned. And for the first mouse click, once again, I will snap into the center. This time I will use a selection point that is vertical. And then let's go through this hole. 
and then I will right click and here I can move it out to the left side of the parent view. And there I have section CC. Let's hit the check mark in order to complete that one. So for your line cross sections, it's going to be three left mouse clicks starting off with the center of the section view. Again, this is one of those things that I find is really pretty easy in SOLIDWORKS. They've mastered this one. For our third topic, I'm going to hop over to sheet number three, where I have a repeat of the drawing view that I used for the different offsets. But I want you to pay attention to this sketch that I have created through here. This is just by going to the sketch tab and then sketching a bunch of different lines. And so I have a sketch that jogs through my part model in order to slice through and essentially create a few different notches. So you can select a pre-existing sketch and if you select that pre-existing sketch and then go to the drawing tab and use your section view command, here saying, hey, wait a second, we recognize that you have a sketch selected and because of the way that this one is jogged out, you can create a legacy foreshortened view or a standard section view. And let's try the legacy short, foreshortened view to show you that one first, and then I will move it down to the bottom and then left click in order to place it. And so this one is making the cross section according to the lines in my sketch. Let's hit the check mark for that one. And we can also take a look at that other different options. It's gonna be a little bit ugly in here. Actually, my sketch is not visible. Let's use the undo button in order to get rid of that section view. And that's the time I can grab my sketch entity. And then I will go to the section view command. And this time, if I create a standard section view, well, let me left click over here. You can see this one is sort of like taking all the different segments and stretching them out. So we're ending up with something that is much longer than the original view. This is not that good. Let me hit the undo button and then go back to the previous selection where we can just select an entity and then section view and then create the legacy foreshortened section view. Let it compute. Left click in order to drop it and then hit the check mark in order to complete it. For some of the different ways that you can modify views, you have commands like a broken out section and also a crop view. Let's take a look at that. I am going to go back to sheet number one and let's start off by creating a projection view. For the projection view, let's just go to the project view command, select this view over here and then drag out a view over to the side. I am going to need this for one of the things that I am going to show. So first off, if we want to create a broken out section, I will click on the broken out section command. And if you take a look at the mouse, let me pause it for a second. There's a little tool tip that is hiding, but right now I can start off with creating a spline manually. So I'm just going to use a few different left mouse clicks in order to select my shape and then I can left click right over on the start of the spline. It senses the start of it. And so I've now I've got my spline and it wants to know a depth for the section and you have a number that you can crank up. But let's say I don't know the depth that I want to use. You can select a piece of geometry and entity in your drawing view, like I can select this particular edge in the model. There is a preview button. So now you can see a section of that view that is sectioned off. I'm happy with that broken out section. So I will hit the check mark. And if you don't like the broken out section, all you have to do is locate the view that you are using. And so this is on sheet one. And if I expand, here is the broken out section. I can right click on it and choose the delete button in order to get rid of it. Delete the following items. I am going to say yes, and it is no longer in there. An alternate way of doing the broken out section is to use a sketch. Let's go to the sketch tab. 
I'm going to sketch a corner rectangle. I'm going to move over here and let it snap to the middle there and then just drag it out some distance and then hit the check mark in order to complete the rectangle. With the rectangle still selected, I will go back over to the drawing tab and then I will choose broken out section. And now I'm no longer going to be sketching a spline. It's going to use the entity that I selected. And for the depth, let's use the same entity as before. Pick that edge and then hit the check mark. And now I have a nice half view created of that broken out section. All right, for the next one, let's take a look at cropping a view. And so here we have the crop view command. This is a, another one that I find is nice if you start off with a sketch first. Let's go to the sketch button. And once again, I'll use a rectangle and let it snap in over here and make it about yay big and then hit the check mark. And so with that rectangle selected, let's go back to the drawing tab and then I can choose to crop the view. And now we have the portion of the view that is within that rectangle that I'd created. So a couple different ways that you can manipulate your pre-existing views in order to limit how much you're seeing of the view. And that is sort of like the partial view command in uh, Creole Parametric, or depending on what you use as your reference entity, uh, the same as a half view and also the broken out section, which is sort of like that local cross section in Creole Parametric. For the last topic that we're going to cover in this video, let me go over to sheet number four. And here I have a view of an assembly model. Let's go back creating a cross section in this one. I'll choose the section command. Let's change back over to a horizontal cross section and I'll let it snap to the center of that circle. I'm not going to add any different notches in here. Let's use the check mark. And now I get a dialog box that opens up and it is the section scope dialog box. And from here, you can choose which components should not have the section applied to them. And so for example, rib features or different fasteners, a lot of times you don't want to have sectioned. So here we have the auto hatching button. You can randomize the scale. Here's the button for excluding fasteners and show excluded fasteners. Right now it's not recognizing any of the different components in my model as the ones that should not be included in here. But let's say I'm, I say this is fine for now. So I'll hit the okay button. And so now I get a preview of my section. Since this is a universal joint, it's a little tilted. That's why some of the lines are not straight. And we have the automatic hatching that is being done in here. And then if I take a look at this, I say, you know what? A few of these components I really don't want included in the section. If I scroll down in the property manager, here is the more properties button. And there are a bunch of different tabs in here. Here is the section scope. I'm going to move this out to the side. You can manually pick which components you do not want to be sectioned. So in this particular situation, there are four different ones that I don't want to be included. So I have picked them. Then I will click the OK button. And now those components don't have the section applied to them. I'm happy with everything else. So let's hit the check mark. And there I have my section view applied just to some of the components in the assembly. So there you have it. Oh, I'm gonna grab this view and just move it up a little bit just so that we don't have the section note overlapping on top of the parent view. Once again, there you have it. That's how you can do sections in SolidWorks, which I have to say is pretty darn easy, especially compared to Creo Parametric.